Today's daf Be'ezu Shem is daf Amem Dalit. We will begin on on uh, Mem, Mem Gimel Amid Beis. I just want to finish off, but right before the Mishnah, a story. We learned yesterday in the Mishnah, and this is going to finish the topic. Um, if you have a, the Mishnah says that if you have a, a person who is a half a, a half a Eved and a half a Ben Chorin, which means he's he was owned by two people, okay? An Eved that was owned by two people. And one of the people freed him. One of the partners freed his part. So now this Eved is a 50% Eved and a 50% regular Jew. An Eved Kanani that's freed, it becomes like a Ger. So now he's, so the Mishnah says, that really he's he's stuck spiritually because he cannot marry anybody. Why? He can't marry a Jew because he's an Eved. He can't marry a Shifcha because he's a Ben Chorin. He's a Jew. So we forced, the Mishnah says that we forced, we forced one of the owners to free his, the remaining owner to free his 50%. So he becomes a full-fledged Jew. That's the force. That's the cause of the force. We force the, the master to free his slave because there's an obligation on a man to get married. He has to have children. That's what the Mishnah says. So, Amr Rav Huna Bar Katina, Amr Rav Yitzchak, Masa Be'isha Achas. We have a woman which is the, has the opposite story. I mean, the same story, but it's a woman. She, she, she was a half a Shevcha and a half a Baschorin. So she was freed uh, by one of her masters. Now she's a 50% Shevcha and 50% Baschorin. So this story was about this girl, the Kolfa Israb of Aso Ben Chashorin. They forced the master to free her and make her a full-fledged Jew so she can marry somebody. So why did we why do we force the master to free him, uh, to free this lady, this this lady, so she can get married? There's no obligation for a woman to get married. It must be Kemam. It's according, they did this according to the 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 uh rogue opinion of Rabbi Yochanan Ben Broika. The Omar, Rabbi Yochanan Ben Broika said that it's not only an obligation for a man to get married, but it's also an obligation for a woman to get married. Why? The Amal Shneim, because the Pasik says for both, referring to man and woman, Adam and Chava, both of you have to do, uh, be fruitful and multiply. So there's a mitzvah, Pruvu, even on a woman. Is that the reason? But it's a, such a rogue opinion. We all, we all know that the real mitzvah obligation is only on a man to get married, not a woman. So why did they force the, this or the master to free? The half a shifcha, half a baschorin, in order for her to get married. There's no obligation for her to get married. Amar Rav Nachman Yitzchak Loi. It's not the. That's not the reason. Minik Hefkan Algebal because she was a lady that wasn't getting married because she was a half a shifcha and a half a baschorin. People were to fool around with her, and and they saw that there was a minik hefker. So they forced the master to give her freedom to let her go free. So now she's a full-fledged Jew, so she has potential to get a, a husband, uh, um, uh, to get married and to a Jewish husband, and who will watch over her that she doesn't be promiscuous. That was the reason. Okay, new Mishnah. You have a, now, when you have a Evet Kanani, as you know, it's like having another lady in your house. It's like having a, a mini gear in your house. That the Evit Kanani is chayiv in all the mitzvahs like a lady. He doesn't put on tefillin, but he has to keep Shabbos, he has to keep kosher and all that. So a guy takes his Evit Kanani and sells it to a goy. He sells it to a goy. Or we're going to see what that means. He sold the 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 the, the Evet to, to live outside of Israel. Okay. So the din is Yotza ben Chorin, he goes free. In other words, if the if the Evid would escape from the guy, he ran away from the guy that you sold him. Or Chazal went one step further. You sold him to a guy, you have to get the guy to, to sell it back to you, no matter what the price is. Because by you selling him to a guy, you're taking him out of a Jewish home and putting him into a Goyish home. So there was a knas chachomim that if you sell a, a eved to a goy, you have to buy it back. And when you buy it back, he doesn't become your slave anymore. He he now is a free man. That's a double knas. Panarabonam, hamoicha avde legoyim. If you sell the slave to a goy, yotzel he goes out free. 
even after you buy him back from the guy, he's automatically a free man. But with Sarach get Shikram and Rabbi Rishon, you have to write him and get Shikra from, from the first master. In other words, the master that's redeeming him. Or if he ran away from the guy, he still needs, in order for him to marry a Jewish girl, he, he's a free man, but he still needs the freedom document from uh, written up by his master. Amr Rab Shimon ben Gamliel, ben Medvar Mamurim, when did we say this? Shalai Kosov Olav Oinoi. Avol Kosov Olav Oinoi Zahu Shechuroi. If they didn't have this Oinoi, in, then you need to write a get shikra. But if an oinoi was written up, then uh, you don't even need a get shikra. So the Gemara asks, my oinoi, what does this mean, oinoi? Omar Rav Sheshis, Rav Sheshis says, the cost of lehachi. He wrote to the Eved like this, like uh, he gave him a little piece of paper. It wasn't a get shikra, but it says like this, mimenu. if you escape from me, Eli Asik Vacha. I want to have nothing to do with you. So therefore, he's basically relinquishing his ownership of this Evid. And in a certain way, that's almost like uh, making him free. So if he sold him to a guy, then, and he had this oina, he had this like piece of paper that he gave to the Evid, then the Evid does not have to come back for a get shikra from the rep master. He just walks out and free. Tanara Bonnet, rabbis taught. Lava all of Min Hagoy, a man, a Jewish guy, borrowed like a let's say a hundred thousand dollars for from a goy, right? Now, what did he pledge? What did he pledge as payment? He pledged his 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 Evid Kanani that if he doesn't pay the the goy, the lender, the goy could foreclose on his Evid Kanani. So Kaven Chaosoloi Goy Nimuse when when the goy, the lender does the Nimus. Yotzel the 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 if the person goes out the cheres. In other words, if the guy forecloses on this evet, presumably, then the the evet if he runs away, goes free. Doesn't matter. My nimuse. What does it mean nimuse? When the guy forecloses on the evet. Amar of Huna, Rabbi Yehuda, Rahuna Rabbi Yehuda said nashki means he put a, ta a tag around the Evid saying, ah, you're the one, your, your master did not pay me back. Now you become my slave. And now I'm putting a, a necklace around you so you can become, uh, or a neck brace, like to prove that you're my slave. And once that happens, then the guy, this Evid Kanaini, although he's the slave of the guy, if he runs away, he will not, he becomes a free Jew and he does not, have to uh, get a, uh, he does not have to, he, he becomes a free Jew, he doesn't go back to the first master. Now the point over here is because by pledging the loan, the Evid Kanani to the guy, to the lender, it's almost as if you're selling him to the guy. And we learned in the mission, if you sell your Evid Kanani to the guy, the Evid goes out free. Masav Rav Sheshis, so Rav Sheshis asked the question, Ha'erisim v'chichayris v'arisi bati avais that's different things, but point of the of the Bryce says is this point: the goy shemishkein sadei liyisrael, a goy that made a mashkin, he 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 for a Jew, a Jew lent the goy money, which is nicer, and the goy said, my field is a pledge for this loan. So afal pisha asuloi nimusai, even though the if the Jew did this nimus, it's still the goy's field. And as a guy's feel, Peturim and Amasa, all, and all the produce is potter from Amasa. Now, we learned before that Nimusi means like a neck or a tag that says, I am an Evid. But that doesn't make sense, this language of Nimusi, to mean the same thing of a feel. If you translate the word Nimusi as a neck brace, Soda Bas Nashkihi is the, is the uh, Soda, you put a neck brace around the Soda, a field? So the Gemara is challenging what this Nimuse means. What is this Nimuse both in the Tanur Abonim and in the Brisa that Rav Sheshis brought? El Omar Rav Sheshis, Rav Sheshis says Zaman. The word Zaman, that's what Nimuse means. So let's read the Brisa. If you, if the, if you, if a person borrowed from a guy, a ye borrowed from a guy, and he said that if I don't pay you back by a certain time, Nimuse means a certain time, then you become my uh, then the, this this evet belongs to you, and same thing over here. The Yisrael lent the goy, and he says, if 
I'm giving you a certain time to pay me back. And if you don't pay me back by that certain time, then, then the field becomes mine. So the Gemara asks, Kashi is man as man. Then how come, then how come we have a stira? Because once you set a time, by the by the Jew lending the guy, we still think we see it as the guy's as the guy's field, and that's why it's part of from my sir. But when when a guy is lending to a yid on a slave, uh we're automatically seeing the slave as if it's already belonging to the guy. And, and we say Yatsulakhiris. So how do you resolve that? Like so the Gemara says it's not difficult. Ha dim ta zimna, ha ta zimna. By the Eved, the reason why it's considered the Goyish a slave and he goes free because it came, the Goy foreclosed on the Eved. It means it reached the time of payment and the Yid didn't pay the Goy back and he foreclosed on the Eved. He took over the Eved. So that's why the Eved goes free. But the case where the Yid lent the Goy uh, with respect to his field. So when the, when the, the, the time of payment did not yet arrive. So it's really the Goyish a person's field. So then, therefore, the, the fruits are potter from an amaiser. So the Gemara says, If the guy foreclosed on the Eved, what's the novelty of that? It's basically the Yid selling his Eved Kanani to a guy. Instead of you know selling it outright, he took a loan first, and now he's giving the Eved to the guy. So what's the Chiddush? Both cases are talking about, well, the time of payment did not come. And yet, we penalize the, the Yid for just even pledging his Evet Kanaini to the guy. Just by pledging the Evet Kanaini for guy, all of a sudden he goes free. The if you pledge the body of the Evet for the guy, automatically he goes free. But in the case of the uh, of the guy pledging his field to the Yid, he didn't give over the, the karka to the to the to the Yid. He just said that if I don't pay you back, you could start eating the fruits of my field. So even if, but the, the field itself will never belong to the Eid. And therefore, at all times, it's going to be part of the Maisa, even if the guy, in the time of payment came back, came due, and the guy did not pay back. Because the Eid will never own the guy's field. He just has a right to eat the fruits. So therefore, it's Goyesha fruits, which are part of Maisa. And one last thing, the e boy is saying, we go to the top of Mendal. e boy is saying, Bishulava Amanas Lamashkone Vili Mishkanai. Really, it's talking about this man did come. And the Yid, the Goy, did not yet foreclose on the Evid. He just didn't get around to taking possession of the Evid. So the Evid goes free. Because the fact that the Yid put up the Evid Kanani as a pledge is enough of a Knas that uh, the Evid will now go free. But the other case is also. It's part of from a miser is it reached the time and the yi did not take possession of the Goyesha land. And therefore it's part of from a nicer. So that's what it means. Shlova Manas Lamashkane. That he lent on, on the condition to foreclose on it. Veloy Mishkane and he did not foreclose on it. New, 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 new thing. Tara Bonham. Let's again, we learned in the Mishnah that if you have an Evid Kanaini, you're not allowed to sell it for a goy. That's for sure. So what happens? If a guy came and just kidnapped it because you owed him money, but you never pledged the Evid Kanaini as, as collateral. Let's say you borrowed from the ma mafia money and they just came and grabbed your Evid Kanaini or, or, or somebody just kidnapped you from the government, kidnapped the Evid Kanaini from the government, doesn't go out free. So the Gemara says, if the Evid Kanani was taken because you owed a debt, the Evid Kanani doesn't free, doesn't go free. Or Aminu, I'll ask you a Spira. If, if the king's uh, house, if the government seized a person's uh, threshold. So they, they, they seized his, his, his tavua, his, his produce. In Bechayve, if it's because he owed taxes, Chayv Lasa, he has to give off Maisa. In Ba'am Pores, if it's just to cause him pain, and they, they had no reason to seize his, his assets, his fruits, Potem Lasa, he's Potem from giving Maisa. But you see, in Bechoi Voi, Chayev Lasa, he has to give it, he has to give off Maisa. Why? Because, because we, we, because at the end of the day, he, he, he's giving over this fruits to pay up a, a debt. So at the end of the day, if he's giving up this Evid to pay up a debt, 
the Evet should go out free. And says the Gemara, Shana Hosom over there, it's different to call me Shtar Shalei. The reason why by by the by the, the by the threshold we say you have to give off my serve because you're benefiting from it because now you don't owe a debt anymore and you're benefiting so therefore if you're paying off a debt uh, from your fruits you have to give off my serve first and then uh, it's like sort of if you want to pay tuition for yeshiva or college you have to first take off my serves from your money and then pay the pay the pay the debt but over here. It's not like uh, it's by the by the evid. It's the evid is it's being taken against your will as a uh, against your will as, as something as, because you owe money. It's not like you're selling it. So in that case, they didn't knas the the owner, and therefore, if he ends up buying this evid back, the evid will remain an evid. Toshma coming here. Uh, avdoi leparhang goy he, if you sell your slave to a, a government official, a farhang is somebody who's a blackmailer. Let's say Goy has some information about, about a person. And he says, I'm going to blackmail you unless you sell me your evid. So this is like a for sale. So if you sell your evid to this farhang Goy, to this blackmail Goy who's trying to blackmail you, Yatsul Kheris, the evid goes out free. So why does it go out free? You're, it's, you're, being, you're forced into a sale against your will. So why would the Evid go out? Why would the Evid go out free? And says the Gemara, Hasam Havale Lepais Lepias. The reason is that you have another way to get this farhang off your head, this blackmail. You could have you had cash to give him, and you didn't give him the cash. And because of that, you, you, you basically sold him your slave. You didn't have to sell him your slave. And if because you didn't have to sell him your slave, there's a knas that the Evid goes free. Kufa saying Amar Rav. Rav said the same thing. You sell your slave to a farangoi. Yatsel he goes out free. So Gemara asks, "My Havale Lamebe, what should he have done? He was a, this is a forced sale. Havale Lapias, he should have appeased the goy, this farang, by giving him money. Vlaipias, and he did not give him money. So new Gemara, we said that if you sell your evet to a goy, right? Let's say the evet escapes the goy, he goes free. What happens? Boy, Rab Yirmiya, Rab Yirmiya asked the question. Let's say you sold the Evid just that he should work for the guy for 30 days. Does that mean that the Evid goes free? Tashima, come in here. If you sell your Evid to a Farangoy, the Evid goes free. And the Gemara understood that if you're selling this to this guy, it's only for a short period of time. So we see the Evid goes free if you sell, make a sale for a short period of time. And says the Gemara, Hosom Bafarang Goy Shane Chazaris. That is talking about a Farhang, a blackmailer, that once you sell it to him, there's no backseas. It's not for a short period of time. You're basically selling a permanent sale. Okay. Now, what is the reason? Let's think about it. What is the reason why we don't want a Yi to sell his Evid Kanani to a Goy? One, because now he's not going to be able to do mitzvahs, or or by being in the house of the guy, he's going to learn from them not to do mitzvahs. And he really re already started his path to being a Jew. So what happens in this scenario? Let's say you sold the Eved, not to do work by the guy, but to live in the guy's house, but the guy gets to keep the knas, or it gets to keep in case he has children, but not to work in the house of the guy, but he's living there. So maybe, uh, maybe that's also bad enough. It's like you're giving you giving the Eved Kanani up to a foster home, or let's say Chutzman a mitzvah maho, Chutzman shabbosos for yom tov maho. Let's say you make a condition on the document that you're selling the guy, he has to allow the Eved Kanani to do mitzvahs. He has to allow the Eved Kanani to keep Shabbos and Yom Tif. Is that uh, would is there a knas there? Leger toichem. Let's say you sell him. Let's say you sell the guy, this Evid Kanani to a Mormon. Let's say a, a, a guy that keeps seven mitzvahs, a real good guy. So perhaps the, the Evid Kanani is not going to learn something bad from the guy. He seems to be a nice person. He keeps seven mitzvahs of Bnei Noach. So maybe he won't go free. Or let's say you sell him to an Yisrael Mumar, a, a, a Jew that converted. Mao, what would it be? The din Lakusi Mao. If you sell the Evid to a Kufian who's like a Jew that accepted, that knows about the Bible, but doesn't keep the Talmud, the, the whatever is the Torah Shabbat path. Maho, what's the, what's the din of all these things? 
So pshoit mi hachada. I'll I'll answer you one question. If you sell if you sell your slave to a ger toishev to a, let's say a Mormon, harehu uh, kagoi. Then it's like selling it to a goy, and the evid goes free. Kusi the Yisrael mishumad. If you sell the evid to a kusi or a, a converted Jew, Amri la. That's a machlekes. Some say it's like kagoi. It's like selling to a goy, and the evid goes free. But Amri la ki Yisrael, and some say it has a din, like you're selling it to a Jew. New gemara. Boyim mene merabami. But they ask the question for my army. Evid shehipal asma legaisis. Evid that joined the army. Okay. He, he joined the army, and now once he's part of the army, the ain rabbi yochel etzia leibedine yisrov leibedine goyim. The rabbi cannot, you know, buy him back. You, you can't get an excuse, uh, uh, an exemption for him. Not not in Jewish courts and not in goyish courts. So now the army wants to pay the master for for allowing them to keep his slave. Mahu Can can the, the can the master keep the money? Because really. We don't want the Evid Kanani to join the army because now he's going to give up keeping his mitzvahs. So can the Jew benefit of keeping the money? Go examine your, your learning and come up with an answer. He went out, searched diligently, and Reb Zika came up with the answer. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa. Hamoicha baisei legoi. A person sells his house to a guy. Now in Eretz Yisrael, you're not allowed to sell your house to a guy. You know why? Because it says loy sechonein. Rashi says you're not allowed to sell your house to a guy. You're not allowed to give them a piece of land to live in Eretz Yisrael. So if a guy sells his house to a guy and he received, let's say, money, dama vasurim, that money, Chacham said, is aser. You can't benefit from that money. The guy on a space of Shei Yisrael. Let's say a guy forced the Jew out of his house in Israel. The ain ba'al of yachal itzi leibedin or so leibedin goyim. He and the Jew cannot take the house back in court, not in Jewish court, not in the goyish court. But the guy who forced him out of his house says, "I want to pay you something." So muta litos damav. The Jew is allowed to keep the money. The koysiv of malabar koysh lam, and he could write up a deed and saying, "I willingly sold it, stole my house to this guy, even though it's not true." Nay, shu kumatzu biyadim because he's saving that money. Because otherwise, if he's not going to take the money, the guy is going to keep the money. So same thing over here. If the arm, if the Evet jumped into the army, the Gemara wants to say is, and and the Jew and the master can't take him back. So then the army, if he pays the 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 master for the slave, he's allowed to keep the money. That's what the Gemara is saying right now. So the Gemara says, "Vidilma, no, Hani Mila bias the kevin the loisagi lo belay bias loasa lazabune." Really, by the house situation, when you when a Jew is forced out of his house. A house is a necessity. So therefore, uh, it, it, if we allow him to keep the money, he's not going to when he's not going to come to make the mistake. Then saying, "Oh, j- just like uh, uh, I'm allowed to keep the money if I if I willfully sold my house to a, to a guy, I'm also allowed to keep the money." Nobody's going to make that kind of a confusion. Aval Avda, but the slave. If we allow this man to keep the money that the army wants to pay him for the slave, the slagi labor layout, a person doesn't really need a slave. It's just a, it's a luxury. So if you allow him to keep the money when the army pays for the slave, he may come to sell the slave on his own. And selling the slave on his own is exactly what the Chaman did not want him to do. So, so, uh, so we don't know. Are you allowed to keep the money or not? So the Gemara answers it like this. Sholchile Rab Ami Rabbi Ami sent, Mini Ami Bar Nosan, Torah Yoytze Lecho Yisrael. I, my name is Ami, the son of Nosan, and I give the Psak for the Jewish people. And I'm saying you're allowed to keep the money, which is nice. Eved Shehipal Atzmele Geises. You have an Eved Kanani that ran and, and got himself drafted into the army. There's no way to get him out to, to get the exemption. And uh, not in the Jewish courts, not in the Goyish courts. And the, but the army wants to pay the master. Mutelitos domes. He's permitted to write the, keep the money. The koysiv v'malav bar koishel came and nation kamatz miyodem. Be allowed to write it in their documents that I'm selling my ever to you because it's as if you're saving saving uh, money from them keeping it. New gemara. Am Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says hamoicher hamoicher avdei legoi koinsu moisad meyeh bedama davka ilav davka. Gemara says. We said that if you sell a, your ever to a guy, you have to buy him back. And if the guy doesn't want to sell it, 
even if it's a hundred times more, he wants a hundred times what he paid for it, you have to pay it. So that's what Rabbi Shulam Levi says. The question is, did Rabbi Shulam Levi says that it means you have to pay a hundred times more to redeem the guy, to redeem the Evet Kanani from the guy, Or he just meant to say you have to pay more, but doesn't mean a hundred times more. A person's not allowed to sell a, a, a large animal to a guy. In Eretz Yisrael, you're not allowed to sell a large animal to a guy because of Chil Shabbos. I'm not going to go into the reason, but if you do sell it to a guy, you could you have to buy it back from the guy. Here it says that you only have to pay ten times its value. So when it's said by the Evit Knaini that you pay a hundred times its value, it means it was like an it was like an exaggeration. That's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says, no, Medilma, Shani Evid, Evid's different. Maybe by an Evid, you have to pay a hundred times its value. The Chol Yom of Yom, Mafkele Mitzvahs, because every day that he's by the guy, he's losing out. He can't do mitzvahs. So again, that was one version. So the way the Gemara comes out with one version is if you sell your Evid to a guy, so now we force the owner to buy it back from the guy. If the guy doesn't want to sell it back, you have to pay a hundred times more than what he sold it for until he agrees to, to sell it to you back. And once you sell it to him back, you're not going to even keep that Evan anymore. He goes free. The Ike the Amri, others say like this, Amri B'Shubba Levi, you only have to pay 10 times the Evan back. That's the Knas. Dafka, live Dafka. Is it 10 times? Maybe more? Maybe less? If you sell the behemagasa to a guy, you have to pay a hundred times its value. So maybe when we said by an Eved, you have to pay 10 times, it means you, you may even have to pay a hundred times. So the Gemara says, no. Shani Eved, Deloy Hadele. Maybe in Eved, we were lenient because it's you're never going to be able to keep the Eved back. So therefore, it's 10 times, but not more than 10 times more. El behema tamamai. But what's the reason by behema? By behema? We shouldn't hardly. It come, so the Gemara says, by behema, you want to be more stricter. And, and that's why he have to pay 100 times. No, you should go, the let him only pay one times more than the 10 times. He should pay 11 times its value, but not 100 times. So Ella, the answer is like this. The reason why we're lenient by an Eved, it's not common for an, you sell your Eved to a Goy. They didn't make a Gzera that you should pay so high. It doesn't mean that the Gzera Barabana means that you have to buy the Eved back, but you don't have to pay such a high price as 100 times it fell, up until 10 and not more. But by Behema Kasa, it seems to be that you're forced to buy it back 100 times because you violated the, the Takanas Chazal. Another two, three more minutes, and then we'll stop. Boy, my name Rabbi Yemi Rabbi Asi. Avdo Yemeis. Mahu Shiknesu es Benoi Acharav. Let's say a man sold his Evet, okay, and now he's supposed to buy it back, okay, and now he sold his Evet to a guy. He's supposed to buy it back, and he died. What would be the din? Do you knas and force his children to buy it back, the inheritors to buy it back? In Tim Tzoloimar, we we find that the knas goes to next generation. In Tim Tzoloima, a koyin did like this. Soram, oizen, bechor, umes, konsu, benoi, A koyin that received the bechor, he doesn't want to bring it up as a carbon. So what he does is he slit the ear of the of this animal so that it would be, uh, now he can shecht it and use it uh, outside of every, uh, outside of the base of Migdash. So Knaz Chacham said, if you do that, the behemoth, Becomes also you're not allowed to benefit from it. So, but let's say he did it anyway and he died. The the Brisa says that Kansu Benoy Achrav, then his son also cannot benefit from it because the father did a big Avera by by making a blemish on his Bachar. So now his son, even after the father died, the son cannot benefit from that animal. But the reason why we 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 cannot. We find the son Bishum Dishu Deraisi because the father violated Issa Torah. Avul Hacha, but over here Issa Derabanim. It was only a violation of Issa Derabanim. So maybe we would not knas the son to buy back the Evan. We go to Ahmed Bey's. A few more lines. The Imtim Tzoloima. So you want to prove it from a case of a Derabanim where a man violated Issa Derabanim. He dies and his son does does or does not have to pick up the knas. 
So let's see in another case. We had an, an, in Mayat Cotton, if a person tried to make, he 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 timed his malacha before Yamtiv so that on Chalamoid he's going to be forced to do malacha on Chalamoid because it's going to be a, a, a complete loss if he doesn't do this malacha on Chalamoid. But he had a way before Yamtiv to make sure that he does not have to do this malacha on Chalamoid. So the, what happens if he perfectly timed it that he's going to be forced to do work on Chalamoy. And then he died. Like We didn't find his children for not being able to do the malacha. Only him, if he was still around, we would say, hey, hey, wait a second, you can't do malacha on Chalamoy because you didn't have to make, make up this situation uh, to happen on Chalamoy. But that's only him if he was still around. But now that his, he died, his son could uh, now that his son uh, is is left with this with this uh, work and it's a would lead to a loss. The son is permitted to work on chalamoy. The answer over there is we didn't knas his son afterwards mishum delay of edisura because no iser was done actually hachamai. But over here an actual iser was done by the father. He he sold his evet to a guy. And now he died. Do we force the son to buy the Evid back from the guy? Is the Knasa Rabbana only to him and he's not around? It's we, we Knast his possessions and he's still around. The possessions are still here, so the son will have to buy the Evid back. So the Gemara concludes, The, the Gemara says, the Bryce says that if a person fertilized his field on Shmita, it was not supposed to do that, then Matzah Shmita, he's not allowed to use that field. He's not allowed to plant that, that field Matzah Shmita because he did a violation of doing something for the field on Shmita. But if he violated, did malacha on, on, on the field during Shemitah by fertilizing it, then, and he died, right away his son could plant with that field. The knas did not uh, tr translate over to his son. So we see from here, only him and not his son. Finally, the Gemara ends, Amar Abaya, Abaya said, Naktin and we have a locha. And this is, a, 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 as we spoke before, it, it could be in any which way. Time tahara shal Somebody touched and made taharas of his friend, Tame. So now he caused him a loss by being metame. And then he died. Now normally he would have to pay the guy back because he was metame, he caused a loss. Loi The son does not have to uh, pay back the damages. My tama hezek sheinenika because really the father didn't really damage the 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 taharis because as you don't see that a, a physical damage it's just a, a a spiritual damage by touching it and making the tamay so it's a damage that's not recognizable loishme hezek that's not really called a damage uknas rabbanihi but nevertheless it's a knas of the rabbanim to make the guy pay lididei kanser rabbanim the bradley kanser rabbanim only him did they knas. But if he dies, his son does not have to pay for those damages. Okay, we will uh, take it over from here. The Gemara continues, then after. Tan Rabbanim, the rabbis taught, Hamoiche Avdei L'chutz La'aretz, someone sells his Evid to, to, to Chutz La'aretz. Let's say he has an Evid, and now he sells him to the United States. He's living in Israel, and he's selling him to somebody living in the United States. Yotzel the Evid goes out free. Vitzorach get shichra, and he needs a get shichra. Merabe Sheni from the second master, from the Jewish second master. He didn't sell it to a guy. He sold it to another Jew living in Chutz I mean, the, the slave goes free, and the person needs a get shichra from the second master. Rab Shimon ben Gamliel Oimer, Rab Shimon ben Gamliel says, Palm and Yatsa, Palm and Yatsa. Sometimes you're in Israel, you sell it to another Jew who's uh, from the from the United States in Israel, but you uh, and, and the Evid will go free. And sometimes he will not go free. Ketzat, what would be the case? Omar, he said, Ploini Avdi, my servant Ploini Mechatihu Le Ploini, I'm selling him to so and so, Antoichi, who's in Antoichi. Antoichi is like a place in Turkey. We'll call it, let's say, New York. So he's selling my Evid to this Antoichi, right? 
So lo yatsa, the Evid does not go out free. Why? Because what he's saying is, I'm selling it to this Antoichi, this New Yorker, but he's living in Israel. And, and therefore, he's not selling him uh, on, on, uh, with the Evid Kanani to go to uh, outside of Israel. So therefore, the Evid Kanani does not go out free. And even if this Antoichi takes him back with him, but that was not part of the original sale. The understanding of the sale is that he, the Evid is going to mostly remain in Israel. So therefore, the Evid does not go out free. But if you're selling him to Lantoichi, to this Antoichi, which is a place in Turkey, who's Sheba Antoichi, who's living in Turkey, and that's how you mention the sale, Yatsa, the Evid goes out free. Because the sale is understood that you're selling him to a person who's going to take the Evid and bring him back to his home country, to his foreign country, which is outside of Israel. Well, that's selling an Evid to another Jewish person outside of Israel. The Evid will go out free. Says the Gemara, one well, last question. Well, Tanya, we learned in Abraisa, if you sell your Evan to an Antoichi, he goes out free. If you can sell him to an Antoichi who's living in Lud, so this Antoichi who moved, who made Aliyah and is living in Lud, then the Evan doesn't go out free. But if you just say, I'm selling him to his Antoichi, he goes out free. And you just told me before, that um uh uh Omar he says plenty of the mechati le plenty on Taiki loyalty doesn't go out free. So how could you how could you square off these two prices? They seem to be contradicting each other. Like Pasha, it's not difficult. When you sell them to let's say a New Yorker, okay, you don't say a New Yorker who's in New York, but you're selling, I'm selling to this New Yorker Jew. But how, the Evid does not go free because the Islay base of Beit Stroll. We're talking about this New Yorker has a house in Israel. So you're basically selling the Evid to another Jew who happens to be a foreign person who made Aliyah and has a house in Israel. Therefore, the Evid doesn't go free. But when does the Evid go free? How the Islay is of Beit Yisrael. He's only living in Eretz Yisrael in a, host, in a hostel or a hotel. And because of that, he doesn't have a permanent place in Eretz Yisrael. So when you're selling, I'm selling to this Antoichi, to this New Yorker, or this Antoichi, you basically, it's understood that this Antoichi, because he doesn't have a house in Israel, he's going to eventually go back to his home country. So it's like as if you sold your Eved to somebody who's going to take him out of Israel. Well, if you sell your Eved to somebody who's going to take him out of Israel, even if you're selling to a Jew, but he's going to take him out of Israel, Yatzel Cheres, he goes out free. In other words, we force you to buy him back. And when you when the Ev, when you buy him back from that from that person, the Evid will go out free. Okay. Look, uh, have a good Shabbos, everybody.